hello guys welcome to this video so in this video we will talk about how to integrate json viewer or editor inside react.js application so if you have a json file that you want to see in the browser with a nice little syntax highlighter for json files so this is actually the interface we have a bootstrap choose file button and here you can select any json file that you want to if i select a sample json file you will actually see this nice little viewer editor where you can actually see the json file what is the type size so in this way we have different themes which it supports this module let me take a json file with a lot more data in it so we have this data if you see integratedly it is showing it it has 0 to 100 items total items it is showing 6113 items then 0 to 100 100 to 200 so it is divided into so it is clearly you can plus click the plus icon and now you can expand this to see more information so this is your name email address if you have any sort of json file that you want to see the structure if you want to integrate this library i will show you step by step in this way you can integrate this json viewer you can basically expand any of these items and see the structure so i will show you guys how to integrate this json viewer inside your application the library that we are using is react it's specifically for react if you go to npmjs.com and just search for this library which is react json view So this is actually the module react json view it's a component and it has got 538,000 weekly downloads and this is actually the command npmi react json view so simply install this by going to your command line and uh, i've already installed it react json view and also we are using react bootstrap as well for making the interface so just additionally install these two modules as well react bootstrap and bootstrap so these are three modules i've already installed it so what i will do i will start my development server so in order to start this i will delete everything and just start from scratch so first of all we need we do need to make a functional component so it will automatically refresh and uh, it will look something like this so for this first of all we need to declare some state variables so we need to keep track of which json file the user will select for that we will have json content set json content and we will have use the initial use state hook initial value will be null so no file will be selected if you load the application for the very first time the second variable is for the error if any sort of error take place we can show the error by using error set error and use state again initial value will be nothing and then we have these two variables state variables and now coming back to the jsx we will import the bootstrap for importing bootstrap we need to import first of all their base css file which is located bootstrap dist css bootstrap main dot css after that we do need to import all the components which we will be using in bootstrap which is container form and alert and this is all coming from react bootstrap so one by one we can use that so in the jsx what we need to do we just need to use the container tag and inside this we will have the heading which will say react json viewer and we will attach some bootstrap classes to it which will be just to align this heading in the center position we will use text center and then we will basically have uh, the form group class and inside this we will basically give a control id to it which will be json file and we will give in a class name to it and inside this uh, we will basically have a form label and here we will simply say that uh, upload a json file and you will see this 
and after this we need to have a form control and this form control will the type will be of file we will be accepting a json file so we will only be accepting dot json files only so accept parameter and we will also be attaching a on change event handler so this will execute whenever you actually select a json file this function that we are attaching will execute let me define this function which will be handle file upload key parameter will automatically be passed as an argument if you see inside this function so what this function will do is actually read your file so in order to parse and read whatever json file the user will submit we will actually inside this get access to the file first of all by using e.target.files after getting access to that file we will compare it if that file exists or not if it doesn't exist in this if condition we will simply show a error message just set error that no file selected and then we will set this error uh, basically return from this so we will not execute the rest of the code and then we will have another condition here if the file that is submitted by the user doesn't is, a, is not a uh, json file in that case so we are simply checking that if the file is not ending with dot json then we will simply show a different error message this time that please upload a valid json file so in that case also we don't execute we return and now if all things are correct then we'll set this error to nothing and then we'll read the file for reading the file we'll use the built-in file reader api which is used to read any file that the user submit in the browser so we read this by using incat uh, instantiating a new constructor of file reader and then this reader object contains a event which is on load and this will execute event parameter will be passed and here inside your try catch block we will read our file if any sort of error take place we can set that error in reading the file and also we will use this method which is reader read as text we will read the file as text and just pass the file so this will be executed first this function read at text so this will call this function which will on load so now inside this here in the try catch block we need to parse the json file so for parsing it we will use this module parsed in order to create a variable and then we will use this function json.parse and we will simply say whatever is the result event.target.result and we will simply set the json content to be parsed json that's all so after you do this guys what will happen uh, if you now select a json file and uh, nothing will display but uh, that json will be successfully parsed and if i show you the console log result because before passing it to the library that we'll be using we need to simply parse the json read this as a text file so whenever i select this if you go to inspect element go to console you will see you will receive an object right here and it contains information about this as a text so we have three properties three json properties and we are uh, just parsing it and reading it so now after successfully reading this now we need to use our library this library will be coming from uh, react json view we need to import this package which will be react json and this will be coming from this react json view now we need to go to our jsx right here so just after this form group we will actually have a condition that if the error exist in that case only we will display a alert box and inside this alert we will simply be showing the error so we will be having the variant which will be danger and we will be showing a danger 
message so now what happens if you basically select any different file if it's not a json file you will receive this alert message that please upload a valid json file so you will see this error message coming because of you this so now after you will have again again a conditional jsx that if the json content is set in that case only you need to show the json view so for this we will use the bootstrap class which is margin top 4 inside this div we will have an h5 tag which will say the json content semicolon sorry colon and now we'll be using that module which is react json and this component basically you need to pass some properties to it because if you don't pass any properties and just select it it will by default it looks something like this so it has the root property and it doesn't tell you anything about it so we need to pass some properties to this so it takes some properties the first one is the actual source so here you need to specify the json content so by default if you select it will show something like this the default theme it is the, you can even change the theme as well by it takes an argument which is the theme and uh, various themes are supported but the famous one is monokai and this is actually the theme the black and the orange the next option is takes is the icons so we have the different icon styles so circle is one of them so it actually have these icons which change to circle the second property is the collapse option if you don't want the collapse to be you can set it to false and uh, enable clipboard simply means that you can copy to clipboard so we can set this option to true so what this means it can simply copy whatever options and the next two options are simple which is display data types if you want to display the data types of all the elements you can display them basically it shows you this what is the type of this variable it's a string value so basically it shows side by side if you toggle this to false it will not show so depending upon whether you want this or feature or not so i want this feature so i will set it to true and if you want to also see the size of it so you can put toggle this option to true and now you will see the size as well so it will also show the size if i show you a json file with lot more you can see now we show these much of items and we can expand and like this so in this way you see this is actually the module where a json viewer and uh, it basically supports various themes you can check their documentation uh, which is react json view and so just go to npmjs.com and if you want to read more about this module so you can see that it has got 538 weekly downloads so it has got a nice little documentation as well you can try out various themes are there so thank you very much guys for watching this video if you hit, if you like this video then please hit that like button subscribe the channel and do check out my website as well freemediatools.com which contains thousands of free tools regarding audio video and image and i will be seeing you in the next video